Hey everybody, welcome to Principles of Accounting. Uh, today's video we're going to give a brief intro to the idea of a liability. Now you probably have some kind of idea of what a liability is. Uh, simply put, it's an amount we owe to another party. And you'd be right in thinking that, and we'll kind of run with that idea today. Uh, first of all, we'll give you a little bit more of a definition of what a liability is. And we'll look at it in the terms of the accounting equation. And then we'll wrap up by looking at what liabilities look like on a balance sheet. So jump right into it. Uh, let's look at liability from a definition standpoint. A liability has three elements to it, and it's a pretty straightforward idea. Uh, liability is going to involve some kind of transaction that's already happened or an event, and it's going to make you currently obligated to pay an amount later on. So for a liability to kind of take place, we have to have all three of those elements. If you're missing one of those elements, you don't have a liability. And it's a pretty easy concept. Uh, I like to think of it in terms of my kid. Um, I have a little girl, a uh, five-year-old, and uh, I hate to say that she's a liability, but she meets all the criteria. I had her in the past, about five years ago, and once she was born, I became obligated to provide for her for, I don't know, 18 years, maybe 21 if she goes to college later on. So we're talking about Mickey Mouse dolls. We're talking about uh, dresses and, and, and the whole nine yards for 18 years. That's quite a liability. And it's the same concept for a business. Any kind of past transaction that they engage in that creates an obligation in the current period that they're going to have to pay later on, that's going to be a liability. So let's talk about it from the standpoint of the accounting equation. Uh, remember, assets equal liability plus equity. Hopefully you, you got that on really week one of accounting. Um, but we're going to kind of look at it from a T account standpoint here. Uh, our liabilities are on the right hand side of the equation. So I'm going to just draw a little T account underneath that. And you probably hopefully remember debit on the left, credit on the right. Now, uh, being on the right-hand side of the equation, that means that our liabilities are going to go up on the credit side. If we want to make a liability increase, we've got to do it with a credit entry. If we want to make a liability decrease, we do it with a debit entry. And now that we've got a little background on what, uh, what a liability is, let's take a look at how liabilities are reported on the balance sheet. Now, what you have in front of you is our balance sheet for Netflix. That's the uh, bottom half, anyway. And if you're not familiar with Netflix, Netflix is a deal where you pay 8 bucks a month and uh, you get the opportunity to stream 20-year-old movies and 4- or 5-year-old TV shows to your heart's desire. Um, so as you're sitting there watching The Walking Dead, here's some idea of what liabilities Netflix incurs to bring that show to you. Uh, first of all, you'll notice hopefully the liabilities are kind of divided into two categories here. We have current liabilities and then we have non-current liabilities. So let's talk a little bit about what the difference between those two guys are. Uh, if we look at our top here, we've got current liabilities. Those are going to be liabilities that are due within a year. Uh, and there could be some exceptions to that if we're talking about a... Uh, company with an operating cycle of longer than a year, and you know, current liabilities might be longer than a year. But for the most part, current liabilities are going to be due within one year of that balance sheet date. Down at the bottom, we have non-current liabilities, such as long-term debt. Uh, obviously, if current liabilities are due within a year, our long-term liabilities are going to be due more than one year out. So let's look at what we have listed under our current liabilities. You'll notice we have a line item called current content liability. And what that is is uh, amounts that Netflix is going to have to pay within the next year to the providers of all those TV shows and movies that we're streaming across on our accounts. Uh, accounts payable, you probably recognize that from uh, your first term of accounting. Accounts payable simply amounts we owe maybe suppliers and vendors and, and things like that. Generally speaking, all our accounts payable are going to be current. Uh, accrued expenses are also most of the time going to be current liabilities. That's amount uh, that we maybe owe our employees for wages and fringe benefits and things like that. Uh, the last one there might be a little bit new to you. Uh, deferred revenue is also known as unearned revenue. And what that is is when Netflix makes a sell and collects cash but they haven't delivered that service yet. And it's pretty common for Netflix to do that. Netflix sells a lot of gift uh, subscriptions, and people buy those and give them away. Well, Netflix collects that money, but maybe the people don't 
kind of sign up for a few months uh, after they get that. So Netflix kind of has a liability there. They've taken someone's money, but they haven't delivered a service yet. And we can kind of call that a deferred revenue or unearned revenue. You can see that is included in their current liabilities there. Uh, Non-current liabilities, we see non-current content liabilities right there. We would consider that to be payments due to the movie studios, TV studios that are due one year out from the balance sheet date or longer. And then the long-term portion of the debt, debt payments that they're going to have to make more than one year out. Uh, finally, at the bottom, we have, doesn't really have a number to it, but it's included in the uh, liability section here, commitments and contingencies. A um, couple of things could be going on there. One of them could be they're just disclosing what they owe for lease payments. Uh, that goes in that part uh, as a note to the financial statement. It could also be to disclose to the readers of the financial statements amounts that uh, Netflix maybe can't put a number to or maybe they can't say with certainty that they're going to be liable for it. Uh, so we could call those things contingent liabilities and we'll cover that in a whole other video. Well, hopefully you got a little bit of an idea on um, the background of a liability from that video. Uh, going forward, we'll be making uh, a few more videos and trying to take a look at how to record liabilities uh, from a journal entry standpoint. And we'll also talk about calculating and estimating liabilities. Um, so be on the lookout for that. If you have any questions on liabilities or any other area of accounting, I'd be happy to help you out. Uh, my email address is on the screen, and we look forward to hearing from you. Thanks.